Hey guys, welcome back to Beastmaster Hunting. I'm your host, Nick Atkinson. Uh, it's late July and the hunting has been rather terrible. Uh, we've had 100 degree days, 110 degree days, uh, 90 degree nights. So instead of bringing you a hunting video, uh, I figured I'd do a video uh, for July that a lot of you have been asking me for. I've got a lot of messages on Facebook asking me for. Um, a lot of people know we've been, uh, we've talked about it a little bit. We're going on a bear hunt in Alaska in October and uh, being that I've only ever hunted in Texas I didn't have a lot of the gear that I needed so I went out and uh, did the research and this is what I ended up with and what I'm taking to Alaska so a lot of people ask me uh, to compile a list or do a video of uh, everything I'm taking and uh, figure this would be a good time to do it so I'm gonna work through everything here uh, maybe a little bit longer than normal video because I got a lot of stuff. Uh, this bear hunt is not like a, a normal like pack in, pack out hunt. We're uh, we're taking a bush plane to uh, a camp and setting up, so we have the opportunity to take a lot more gear than you would if you were packing in because we're not worried really about um, really we're we're not worried about keeping the weight super low. Uh, you know, day packs and everything like that, are, we're going to try and keep them light. But we're going to have a, a, a camp set up where we can keep all of our gear, and uh, that'll give us the opportunity to have more stuff. So here it is. Uh, let's get started. So just got a regular old mountaineering bag over here that's going to carry all of my extra junk that's going to go on. Uh, that's going to be my check bag on the plane. I'm going to break this down as... Um, my day pack, I'm going to pack that like I'm going to, and then I'm going to pack everything else into this uh, other big duffel bag over here because some of these things aren't going to go in my day pack because my day pack is also going to be my carry-on. So some of these things are going to uh, get packed in uh, my check bag and then transferred over to my day pack whenever we get there. So let's get started. Uh, sleeping bag. So I didn't really have a cold weather sleeping bag because I live in Texas. <laughs> uh, we don't really need cold weather sleeping bag here. So I ended up with an enlightened equipment quilt. Uh, this is called the Convert and it is down. Um, I don't remember all the specs on it. I hate watching review videos where they give you all the specs anyway because if you want to know the specs you can go find it on YouTube or on uh, the company's website and you don't need to go to YouTube for that. So it's pretty cool. Digital camo. Uh, or I'm sorry. Uh, this is uh, Unicam, is what it's called. Uh, anyway, it's a down bag, like seven feet long, five feet wide, and it's pretty lightweight. I think it weighs like a pound and a half. And you can see that this thing will compress down once I get ready to pack it into almost nothing. So, because we're not getting ready to go yet, I'm leaving it in this uh, storage bag to keep it lofted, but it'll eventually get packed down into a dry bag and go into my carry-on. So, because it's huge, I'm going to leave it right there for now. Um, I guess we'll just start on the end and kind of work our way back here. So, a uh, pair of extra gloves. I got some work insulated work gloves uh, that are going to go with me to camp just in case my other gloves get wet or in case I need to move some wood or do any kind of work around camp. Those are good to have so you don't tear up your good hunting gloves. Um, this is a uh, inflatable pillow that's going to go along with my sleeping bag, so we'll put that in there. Just a regular old Cabela's air mattress. Um, this thing is pretty decent for the money, and it's a little bit heavy, but like I said, we have an advantage on this hunt of uh, not really being worried about overall weight. Uh, Microfiber towel, so this is like a tiny little chamois. Uh, I figured it'd be good to have around camp in case I want to rinse off or something like that. That way I don't have to use any of my clothes or something to dry off. <clears throat> That'll go in there in this top pocket. Um, what else? Solar panel. Obviously, we're going to be taking a lot of cameras and everything like that. I'm not going to go over all the cameras that we're taking, but uh, we're going to be filming through some different spine scopes and uh, 
we've got several setups that are going with us, so that's a separate issue. But uh, big old solar panel here to charge our batteries uh, while we're away from camp during the day. Now I'll just go on the bottom of my pack. What else goes on the bottom? Well, we'll just start here. Spoon, titanium spoon, spork thing. Figure, even though our guide is bringing all the food, I want my own utensil, just so that way I know where it's been. And it's always a backup. Uh, gator, so, all right. You're gonna see like a Kuyu explosion all over this table because uh, like I said I don't have any really cold weather gear hunting in Texas is like if it's cold uh, we just put on some coveralls and you know you're covered huh get it anyway uh, so I did a lot of research between First Light, Sitka, Kuyu uh, a couple of other companies out there and I landed on Kuyu because um, the price for the quality basically and uh, something that was attractive to me about Kuyu for future hunts is the super lightweight of everything because uh, next year we're going to do probably a couple of sheep hunts um, where weight is really going to be a factor so that's why I, uh, one of the reasons I ended up on Kuyu so uh, these are the Yukon Gators and I'm going to be wearing these pretty much every day but for the ride out there they're going in my check bag Uh, we'll just keep, keep on the Kuyu path here. Got some uh, the guide pants, which are their heaviest uh, as far as a cold weather pant goes. The guide jacket, soft shell. Like I said, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on specs on here because you can get on the website and find it. Or we'll do a separate review video of this stuff after uh, the hunt. These are the attack pants. Um, they are like a little bit lighter than the guide pants, kind of general purpose. And I wanted to have two pairs of pants um, with me because, you know, never know what happens to one pair. And like I said, weight is not a huge factor, so I can take two sets. Uh, some 210 Merino uh, zip-off bottoms. Uh, those are going in a dry bag. Let's keep those out for a second. 210, or sorry, these are 145 Merino zip-off bottoms. So I got 210s and 145s. A couple of different options depending on how cold it is. Uh, a 210 top and a 145 top. So two sets of wool underwear, long underwear. And there's a dry bag for them somewhere right here. So these are gonna get packed up in this dry bag. My buddy Mark over at uh, the uh, National Shooting Sports Foundation hooked me up with these dry bags. And uh, it, it was crazy timing because we happened to go hunting and uh, he just brought me some, some swag and <laughs> the dry bags were literally on my list to buy. So thanks Mark, appreciate it. One last thing I had to go get. <clears throat> Gotta keep your wool dry. Got to keep the moths away from it, especially when it's in storage here in Texas. So that's why it stays in the dry bag and it's going right in there. Uh, another little piece of gear. This is some tenacious tape. You can get this at like REI uh, or any outdoor store uh, for repairs on any of my clothing that I might tear while we're out there. That's going over there. Oh, you know what? I need to move that spork. I put it in with the air mattress. Don't want to poke your air mattress. Okay, what else is going in that bag? This is just a, a bag full of wool socks and uh, my boxers. So I'm taking five pairs of socks and five pairs of boxers, which is a lot more than you would normally take on a hunt like this. But like I said, we have a lot of room for weight. So uh, I would probably try to get by on like two or three pairs of boxers and three pairs of socks uh, if we were concerned with weight, but we're not. So that's going in the check bag. Um, 
What else is going in the check bag? I think that's about, oh. no, we got uh, trekking pole. Um, this uh, trekking pole, I spent a little bit more money on it than I probably would have because uh, it's carbon fiber and for future hunts um, where, we're, where we're concerned about weight. This is gonna help out because it's super lightweight. I'm not sure specs on it. Look on the website. It's an REI Flash Carbon Series. If you wanna know weight specs. But it packs down nice. Goes right in my check bag. Uh, let's see. I think everything else besides like boots and stuff is gonna go in my day pack. So let's do that. Uh, boots. I ended up on the, uh, these are the Zamberlan, um, man, I can't remember. They're not the Cougars. The Cougars are the short version of this, but uh, the tall version of the Cougars, whatever that is. Um, these things are Italian leather and made for hiking. Uh, this is the uh, like hunting line that Zamberlan's come out with. Pretty lightweight for what they are and really required no break-in, which... For a hiking boot, I was uh, pretty impressed. So no blisters, and uh, they're really stiff, but they don't slide around like I thought they would. Um, all right, day pack. Every time I say day pack, I think of day man, fighter of the night man. That's for all of you guys who watch It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Great show. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's do that last. Let's go with uh, rain gear. So the uh, Kuyu uh, Yukon rain gear is what I ended up going with because that's what's recommended by Kuyu for Alaska. Uh, because you're going to be in your rain gear a lot and it's like the most durable um, rain gear that they offer. So Alaska, lots of rocks. Uh, everything like that, uh, and Kuyu, or uh, sorry, Yukon jacket and pants. I'm going to put those in just a second because this needs to go under. Uh, so this is my hydration bladder. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Some people have preferences on what brand or whatever hydration bladder. I know Platypus is expensive or uh, is popular with a lot of guys and not super expensive. Um, you know, this is this is one that uh, Eberly Stock uh, recommends. So that's what I went with because I'm going with an Eberly Stock pack. So hydration bladder will slide right in here. This is a two liter, and I actually got two of them, so I'll have a backup. And before you go out, you stuff this sucker through this hole and line all or uh, run all your lines and everything like that. <clears throat> so. Um, what else needs to go in there? I've already got in here extra pair of socks just in a Ziploc bag because I like dry feet so that's going to stay in my pack no matter what. Uh, in the top pouch here uh, I guess we can talk about the bag. This is an Eberly Stock Low Drag is what I ended up going with. It's um, pretty small and it's really light and that's why I ended up with it is because I didn't want a whole bunch of weight for whenever I'm dragging everything around. So a lot of uh, organization options here. Uh, tucked in the side pocket here, I've got the rain fly just stuffed down in that pocket there. And uh, the trekking pole we'll put on at the end. I'll leave that out because I said I was going to build my day pack out for you guys. It goes on the side too. So, uh, the top up here is where I'm putting my rain gear. Because I'm either going to be wearing this a lot or I'm going to be getting it in and out a lot. Because it's supposed to rain a lot. We're going to be uh, near Iliamna, Alaska, and it rains. 13 days out of October on average. We're going to be there for 21 days. So, good chance it's going to be raining the whole time we're there. Or snowing. 
the temperatures there, the average is like 50 degrees uh, in the daytime, the average high. The average low is like 20, so we could get some snow um, at night. The record low is minus 20, so that's why um, you, you'll see what I'm, I'm packing could look like it's a little overkill for those temperatures. But if we get stuck out there in minus 20, I want to be prepared for it. So that's why I got a zero degree sleeping bag and some extra down that we'll get into here in a second whenever we start packing it. Uh, this top pouch on this bag has an extra zipper pouch here and this is where I'm putting all my um, gear that I hopefully won't need like extra stuff. Some um, biodegradable uh, wipes. My extra headlamp. This is uh, a Petzl. It's really small. Weighs pretty much nothing. This is just a spare backup headlamp. Um, my other headlamp is a black diamond, and I'm not sure where it is. I think it's in my truck because I was using it the other night. So that'll go in here also. Some extra batteries for headlamps. An emergency blanket. An extra emergency blanket. Some uh, waterproof matches. Whenever we get there, uh, whenever we get off the commercial plane that we're flying in on, I'm also going to buy a lighter and stick it in there. Um, this is a fire starter, magnesium fire starter. Can't ever have enough fire starting stuff. This is a charger for some of our gear that uh, plugs into that solar panel. And I'm going to keep it in my pack with me so I know where it is. And that's all that's going in that little pouch. Okay. Um, on the outside of my pack, I just took some old uh, decommissioned military uh, mag pouches, and uh, I think this was a med pouch, and strapped them to the outside to stick extra stuff in. So uh, I've got some gauze and uh, that'll go right in there along with my tourniquet because something happens out in the woods gauze and a tourniquet could save your life and uh, you know everything else can be back at camp so that's going right there on the outside of my pack so it's easily accessible but not in the way um, my pack also has these little uh, belt pouches. I'm going to stick my uh, toboggan in there. This is a uh, merino wool uh, beanie from Kuyu that I stuffed an REI uh, fleece um, beanie up into it. I didn't really like how the, the wool on my forehead felt. So basically just serving as a camo layer for the fleece beanie that I already had. And that's going to go in this belt pouch because it might be in and out frequently and I don't want to have to take my pack off to get to it. Same way with gloves. Uh, I want to have to take my pack off to get to them so I've got this side pouch uh, that I'm going to keep my gloves in and because I've got an insulation layer of gloves I'm going to keep them in a, a, a dry bag. This is just a Sea to Summit uh, roll top dry bag. It's a little bit smaller. I couldn't use the shooting sports, National Shooting Sports Foundation dry bags because they were um, a little bit bigger than I wanted for this. So these are the Kuyu Peloton um, 130s and these make good a good insulation layer or if you just want something to cover your hands. I'm not big on just having something to cover my hands, especially for a bear hunt, you know. Uh, I'm not worried about this much skin showing. Uh, for that bear, but if you were doing uh, a stalk like a, to bow hunt a bear or something like that, then you might need something to do a skin layer. Uh, these are more just going to be uh, insulation layer for me if it gets really cold. Uh, the other gloves that I've got are the Kuyu North Star. I didn't have any, believe it or not, I didn't have any really heavy gloves that were waterproof. I got to looking, and everything that I've always worn has been to go skiing in Colorado or New Mexico or something like that. And my ski gloves, I always remember my hands getting soaked just because they're terrible. So new glove technology that's come out in the past like 15 years since I bought ski gloves. 
um, I was I was really impressed with. These North Star gloves are pretty cool, uh, and they're 100% waterproof, so no water's getting in there. Leather palm, and even though they're a huge glove, um, I took my rifle and ran the bolt, and I could actually feel the trigger, which the trigger on this rifle is uh, set at just about a pound uh, with the Timney Calvin Elite trigger, and I could still feel the trigger uh, as I was placing my finger on it before I pulled it. So I was really impressed with that. So these gloves are going to go in this roll bag. And just like everything else, Kuyu makes super light. So I'm not worried about carrying them around, even if it's not a cold day, just in case. I'm a just in case kind of guy. If you've ever gone hunting with me, you know I like to take a lot of stuff um, that will probably never ever get used. But it's good to have it, and it's good to have it if you have the room for it, and it's good to have it if it doesn't take up or if it doesn't weigh a whole bunch. So that's just to keep those dry in case it starts raining and I don't have the rain fly on my bag. They stuff right into this side pouch. Just like that. Um, glassing pad so whenever it's rainy and uh, you're sitting on the side of a mountain because that's what we're going to be doing a lot of with this bear hunt is we see a bear or uh, we're at camp sitting there looking for bears we see a bear so we're going to watch him and see what he's doing see which way he's going uh, see if he's a good bear and uh, spending all that time sitting on the ground would suck so uh, I just ordered this on Amazon it's a Thermarest Z seat so it's called so just something so you're not sitting on the wet ground or cold rocks or anything like that and it folds up all different kinds of ways uh, like that I'm just putting it flat like this and it's gonna go in my top pouch right here with uh, with my uh, rain gear because it's also gonna be coming in and out quite a bit let's get this top one zipped up because we're done with it. It's amazing to me. Uh, I, I love watching videos on YouTube uh, as much as I love making them or more. And it's amazing to me, you watch all these videos where everybody has their gear laid out on a table and ha it just packs all up into, you know, this bag isn't even gonna be close to full and then this small day pack and you're good to go. So, I don't know, side note. Something I think is cool. Um, let's do waders next. Okay, so waders, um, our guide recommended bringing some hip waders for river crossings. And if you don't know what hip waders are, they're boots that go from about here all the way down and they have a big rubber boot attached on the end of them. And they're heavy, as you, as you can imagine, because they, they're neoprene or they're some thick material, uh, thick rubber. And um, I didn't really want to carry around like 15 pounds of rubber if I didn't have to. So thinking outside the box a little bit, uh, I started trying to figure out different ways to do this. And uh, I ended up getting a pair of fly fishing um, river pants, wading pants. So these are super thin. They're seam taped, so they're waterproof. And I mean, I don't know, these weigh like a pound and a half maybe. So, and they're, pack, they're packable. Where, where am I gonna put waders on this pack? If I'm not, because people just end up wearing them uh, according to our guide because uh, they don't wanna carry them around. So I don't wanna wear waders all the time and I don't wanna carry waders around all the time. So I got these wading pants and we're just going to roll them up to, I mean, the size of my rain pants. And put them in this dry bag. It's a little bit of a tight fit. Uh, and somebody asked me why I was putting rain pants, or uh, waterproof river pants in a uh, dry bag. It's mostly to keep them rolled up. But also, whenever I get these things wet, 
I don't want to put them back in my pack and then my pack start absorbing water and it stays wet for days. So these are going in the dry bag just like that. Not really worried about uh, rolling this down to keep them airtight. It's more just to have a spot for them. Now, if you noticed on the bottom of these, they have like some little uh, booties that are made out of neoprene and they're also waterproof. Uh, those booties are made to go in a wading boot, okay? Um, wading boots are about this tall and they're huge because you have to wear a bigger size um, whenever you have a big neoprene thing going in them and you're usually wearing socks under that. So again, I didn't want to carry something really big, bulky, and heavy. Uh, what I ended up doing was going to Goodwill and I found, uh, I knew I'd have to go up a couple sizes. So usually I wear like an 11 and a half. These are a 13 and uh, they're Merrill hiking shoes which what are the odds that you find some decent hiking shoes in a size 13 at Goodwill? Um, they're pretty lightweight. They're definitely uh, more lightweight than carrying waders around. And I'm just taking them. I pulled some, uh, I pulled some straps off of one of my 511 backpacks. And I'm just gonna take these here, run this strap around them. And they're gonna get strapped to the bottom of my pack. Just like that. So this way, when I get these shoes wet, they're staying on the outside of my bag. I don't have to mess with putting them in, either in a bag to keep uh, everything in my pack dry. I don't have to mess with shoes taking up room in my pack. And uh, they're down low, so it keeps my center gravity nice shouldn't be a problem last thing to go in my day pack besides guns is down um, for when we're sitting in glassing and it's cold or if it's windy uh, I ended up the, getting the Kuyu super down pants and the Kuyu um, super ultra down <laughs> jacket and uh, I had the super down jacket first, but I got it a little bit too small and it was too tight. Uh, so I went for the Ultra that came out a little bit later and it's uh, actually like a like half a pound lighter. And it's crazy how light some of this stuff is. And you wouldn't think that, oh yeah, you're gonna make a big deal out of it. But whenever you pick this thing up, it's, it's almost mind blowing how light it is. So the super down Ultra pants are supposed to be coming out um, pretty soon so I imagine I have to upgrade to those but you can see that these pack down to almost nothing also and they're gonna go in a dry bag because you don't want to get your down wet if you get your down wet and then you need it you're screwed because it won't do anything except for be wet so, this is always going to stay in my pack because if for some reason we get stranded, can't get back to camp, I've got a way to make a fire, I've got rain gear, and I've got an insulation layer so I can stay warm and make it through the night hopefully. That's the plan anyway. And I've got guns. That helps me make it through the night. I think it does. And flashlights. Always need flashlights for when you're stuck out in the woods. So this compresses nice and compresses down. Huh, get it? This will go in my day pack. Just like that. We'll zip this sucker up so it's all how it's going to be while we're carrying it. The straps for these shoes make it a little hard to get the zipper started, but I don't ever plan on unzipping it completely. I'll probably just zip it like to right there and get in there. So that really worked out pretty good. Uh, 
trekking pole. Told you my uh, rain fly is in this pouch over here. So on this other side, there's a pouch right there. And my trekking pole is just gonna go down in that when I'm not using it. Like so, between these compression straps, you pull these compression straps and that's not gonna go anywhere. Not gonna be an issue. All right, now, um, pistol and rifle, okay? This pack is really cool because it's got this, I have it folded out already, but that stuff's up in there. But it folds out and there's a scabbard built in here. Uh, let's do the pistol first. So this is a, a, a collaboration between Beastmaster Hunting and Agency Arms. We ordered uh, some of these pistols and it's a 10 millimeter Glock, uh, which has caused uh, quite a bit of controversy, beca controversy uh, because people apparently think that you shouldn't carry a 10 millimeter in Alaska unless you want to get eaten by a bear. In fact, there's a lot of people in Alaska that carry 10 millimeter um, as their sidearm. And remember, this is not our hunting firearm, right? This is the, you're, you're gonna carry it right here on your belt strap okay and if something ends up barreling out of the woods right on top of you i need to get some to something fast bang 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 all right i got 16 shots okay um as opposed to carrying uh like a 500 with five shots that uh is absolutely terrible to shoot or a six shot 44 magnum or an eight shot 41 magnum um just my opinion, I mean, just it's just my preference. I'm a Glock shooter. If uh, you don't know, or you haven't followed me before on my shooter page, uh, I shoot professionally uh, for a living. So I've shot Glock for the last three and a half years, four years, no. I've shot Glock for the last 15 years. I've shot agency arm Glocks uh, for the last three years. So it is definitely a, uh, a fine weapon of choice. And if it comes down to that, I'm just gonna shoot the bear a lot in the head. Uh, okay, so this gun, I don't have my holster for it yet, is gonna go right here on my belt strap. And uh, part of the reason for going with the Glock is it doesn't hardly weigh anything. We, I know I made it a big deal out of weight doesn't really matter for this trip. Weight matters in this pack. Weight doesn't matter in that bag, okay? Um, and the, the cuts that Agency Arms does, if uh, you haven't seen one of their guns before, it's got all these serrations cut in it. It's got an optic cut out up here. And uh, I don't think they internally lightened these. No, this one's not internally lightened because of the, uh, the arm R cut up here. But uh, it's significantly lighter than a stock Glock. So. Bam, right there on the waistband. Okay, rifle. <clears throat> the rifle that we're gonna use on this hunt is a Proof Research 338 Norma in their TAC-2 configuration. And it is currently being built. This is my butt cover for my rifle. But I just so happen to have a TAC-2 in a 6.5 Creedmoor that's my personal gun with uh, uh, their carbon fiber bull barrel. The 300 that we're having built um, is going to be the Sendero barrel profile. So a little bit lighter barrel because it's going to have a lot heavier action. This is a short action and the 338 Norma is in magnum action, so in a, in a, a magnum action, so it's a lot uh, heavier. Leupold VX, or uh, Mark VI optic, um, and this gun is basically exactly like the gun we're taking, just a little bit smaller. So it's my stand-in for uh, training while we're waiting on getting the Norma. So this gun uh, just slides into my pack right up in the top. and down into 
this sleeve down here. Just like that. So I've got, uh, there's these clips and everything on here that you can snap up to hold everything in place or whatever. Uh, I've got this butt cover that just goes over right there. A little bit more protection. Or if you, you know, you gotta walk through a public place or whatever. You don't want people to know that you have a gun, even though open carry is legal here and uh, legal in Alaska as far as I know. So that's my day pack. It weighs with the rifle in it uh, ugh, right at 35 pounds. And that's including my water. So not bad for uh, trekking through the wilderness. Here it is. There's some videos on this pack. Um, people retrieving their rifles. And even Everly Stock says uh, you can do it that way. I don't know if I've just got like short arms or my pack is adjusted incorrectly. I'm not sure I'd want to try it. And that's why I'm going to be carrying a pistol right here. Um, pack feels good to me. I don't think I'm going to change anything. It rides really tight against my back. Uh, and sits right on top of my hips. You can really feel a lot of that weight is absorbed. I mean, you can, I can almost take this shoulder straps off and the pack doesn't try to go down anywhere. So anyway, that's the gear for Alaska, all packed up. Obviously we're gonna have a gun case, we're gonna have camera cases, uh, we're gonna have all kinds of stuff, but as far as uh, what I'm taking to hunt with, you're looking at it. Uh, 35 pounds in the pack, with wa including water, and then probably another 20 pounds right here. So, really uh, excluding boots and an extra box of bullets. You know, I'm at like under 50 pounds. So, and ready to go hunting. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, check out episodes of Beastmaster Hunting on the channel. Check out BeastmasterHunting.com. It's not up quite yet, but keep checking back because when it does come up, there's going to be some awesome stuff on there. We're going to have our t-shirts, our patches, Vertex uh, gear, all kinds of things like that that you can purchase. And uh, coming up here pretty soon, we're going to have the Beastmaster pistols and the Beastmaster hunting rifle coming out soon also. So I'm Nick Atkinson. Go hunt something.